Hurry up, man. Just roll anyway. All right. Should I start up with hot tap again? Once again, remember <laughs> that's the camera. All right. Let's try to let's try to knock this out real quick. Coming down on three, two, one. Oh, tap and welcome to the flow. And our studios today. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do it again. Coming down on three, two, one. Oh, tap and welcome to the studios of the flow. And in our studios, we have Chuck D. Shit. <laughs> like every time I do this shit, I'm like, oh, no. hey, just just let it flow. Take uh, profit in the house. All right. All right, coming down on three, two, one. Oh, tap and welcome to the sets of the, to the set, to the set. All right, coming down, it's easy. If you make a little mistake, don't worry about it. Because I guess because of the camera shit. Coming down on three, two, one. Oh, tap and welcome to the set of the flow. And in our studio today, today, damn it, we got to do that over. All right, coming down on three, two, one. Oh, tap and welcome to the flow. <laughs> Y'all know how many times I did this shit last time? Come on, man. I was ignoring the camera. Take it back. Chill, this shit. Three, you interview me. Three, He's two, done this shit so many times. One. Hey, what's up? My name is Chuck D. Welcome to the flow, and we have your host. Wow, wow man. Steve. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Chuck? How you we, feeling, man? I'm, uh, I just decided to flip the script a little. <laughs> this is the number one show going on out here as far as, you know, um, African-American <laughs> news. <laughs> Yo, let's do it right this time. <laughs> All right, let's do it for real this time. All right, coming down on three, two, one. Hold it. Coming down on three, two, one. Hotep and welcome. I'm Wildman Steve. You're on the set of The Flow. And in our studios today, we have Chuck D of Public Enemy. What's up, Chuck? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Strong Island finally got news. Here we go. Definitely got some news out here. Good so to see you, Steve. Good to see you, too, brother. How you been? I, I've been working hard in the studio, so I'm tired today. I hear you. Mm -hmm. I may be on the road and doing a lot of things. And yeah, yeah. Well, Ted Parr is taking care of business, you know. Yeah, well, you know, like this year's been a lounging year, but next year is back to work again. So you're saying Public Enemy's coming out another album next year? Next spring, yeah. Ooh. And um, it's, it's really confrontational. You have a title for the album yet? Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to divulge it right now, though, right? Nah, it makes no sense. I hear you. You know, right now, enjoy what's coming out. You know, uh, you know, as we go back to WBAU days, you know, we just enjoy all mu types of music that's out now. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm still vibing off the Youngsters album. Yeah, it's got a lot of flavor to it. Yeah. Definitely got a flavor. And, and, and Shaquille O'Neal's album, too. Shaq! Yeah, I like Shaq Diesel. Shaq, yeah, Shaq is definitely in there. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the other artists that you like as well? Well, I think Kane album um, looks like a job for it. Got the strongest, best lyrics. Uh, lyrically, is the best thing I, I, I've heard in, in about four or five years. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, probably won't, you know, they expect greater things for Kane, but they're just, you know, that's stupid because I think Kane is hands down the, the, the best lyricist in rap to ever live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother definitely has flavor. He got the analogies, he has the words, he's strong, he's clear. And to me, you know, I mean, since I'm an older brother, that pretty much is the standard, you know. He's clear, he's strong, and he and he kicks it fast, and he can kick it slow. Hmm. He can take a fast beat, he can take a slow beat. You know, today you have a lot of people that's they're on a 98 beats per minute, 102, but nobody's taking any chances going up 115 beats a minute or 120 beats a minute like I've heard Big Daddy Kane do. Hmm. So that's why I give him props. And of course, Run DMC's album. And, um, of course, you got the, the new groups, of course, that's kicking flavor all over the place. So, um, like I said, by the end of the year, I'll have a top ten that'll make me very happy. Das Effects freaking got me going right about that. Mm, definitely. You know, that way, yeah. so. What about female artists as well? Yeah, well, to me, it's, you know, Latifah and Light, hands down. I know you love Light. So Latifah <laughs> and Light. And, Light, and um, you know, the other one's got to come up a little bit. I mean, I know LaShawn who used to be Almond um, Joy. Right. She's nice, you know, but um, still, I know Latifah, straight up, you know, it's about be being believable. Latifah being on so many tours with her that she could go out and play ball and post her brother up, be like, yo, and post him up. So she actually can um, rap about what she mean, you know, mm. and, um, and 
Light has always been strong because she's had a different type of voice. So I always thought that most females have the similar same type of voice. Um, but Light and Latif have been exceptions to the rule. And of course, you know, you use salt and pepper. They do their type of thing, you know, and that's pretty encouraging. To me, longevity is the thing that counts because just like in basketball, you could you find people out there, you know, you could go to the park and play, but also there's people like John Starks and, and you know, um, Scottie Pippen. They in there, they, they, they do that. You know what I'm saying? They do that. They just don't go to the park and play, you know, because they do that and they'll be doing that five years from now. Mm -hmm. And that's why Light and Latifah came or Run DMC or even, you know, like who I call the, the, the new artist that's going to have a long career, like your Tribe Called Quest, mm -hmm. your Naughty by Natures, those that established... The leaders. Yeah, leaders, of course. Those that established different right. type of facets, you know, right. that were original. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but as far as anybody that wants to, wants to go at it, go kick it. Strong Island has been a hot bid for rappers for the last 10 years, so it will continue on. From all the way back in the days, from Freddie Fox all the way up to Rumpy Stillskins, it's, it's on. Well, Freddie Fox is from out here as well. Yeah. I didn't Fred, know that. Remember Freddie Fox did a record back in the days with uh, Supreme Force. It was called Handling Things. Mm. Remember the jam? Handling Things. You know, he's for Suffolk, you know, and as well. We know EPMD and Rock right. Kim and all that. You know, so Wine Dance and Brentwood and that area, Amityville, has always had a lot of flavor going all the way back to, um, uh, what, Pleasure. Remember? Uh, he did Pleasure. Now you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, Nelson PR. Um, Nelson PR and stuff mm. like that, you know, where, it was, you know, Spectrum was from Nassau. Now you're telling you your know, age now, too. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm 33, <laughs> and I'm proud to say my age. I'm I still in the rap game, and, you know, I try to do, next year I'll do what no other 33-year-old has ever done in rap music. So a lot of people be like, whoa, whoa, you know, what do you, what do you plan to set sights on? I plan on saying some things that's never been said, that should be said, and I plan on doing some things that nobody my age has ever done, with the exception of Ice-T, who got a couple of years on me. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what makes it fun for me, because I tell people, uh, when you get my age, then we'll see if you still be in there and that. And I've been doing it since what, 19? That's a long time, mm -hmm. Not too many people can say they've done it that long. Well, I've done every phase, every facet, you know, from working on being used, doing the advertising, doing our own show, um, engineering, um, you know, situations like in TV programming on UHF back in the day with Bill Stephanie, you know, doing pro producing, um, writing, right. writing articles, all the kinds of stuff, you know. And, um, you know, Dre, you know, all us guys come from the same camp. So, um, mm. I've done it all. Yeah. There was a lot of talent that came out of that era there. All came out of VAU. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think today's talent just needs to be more diversified. I mean, like the brothers up here with the TV station uh, are going into a whole new, a whole new um, type of talent search, a talent type of thing. And I think something like this is similar to what we did back with radio back in the day. I mean, we got Terminator X on the one of the cameras. But, you know, I don't know if that boy is serious about that or not. <laughs> nah, he's serious. He's serious. he's serious about whatever he does. You know, that old rock wall of you. <laughs> so what, what are some of the plans that's besides coming up the album uh, for PE94? Some of the other things you got planned for PE? I'm working uh, with, with some brothers called the Punk Barbarians. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they hail from Hipster Freeport, you know, the Roosevelt area. Um, they're doing a lot of background vocals on the PE album, adding mm -hmm. a lot of young flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, they have a cut on the next Terminator X album that we're trying to get out now. Um, Terminator X has an album, you know, I mean, I guess you know, because uh, you hosted the last Terminator right. X album. And, uh, this Valley one, of GPs, right. yeah, Valley of the GPs. This one's called Terminator X and the Godfather's a Threat. The album's called mm -hmm. Super Bad, and it has a combination of old school flavor, like it got Houdini. Mm -hmm. Cold Crush Brothers and the Fantastic Five, um, and I also got New School flavor on it. You know, it's like got this brother from Roosevelt named Mel Kwan. Mm -hmm. and, you know, got the Punk Barbarians. You know, Bonnie Clyde Bonnie from Clyde. Dayton. You right. know, re-enter and do do something. So with that old school, new school type of combination, we figure you know we'll put together a nice sort of um, rap radio show on record or on tape. Try to make it different. Whatever I try to do, I try to be different. 
you know, it's like you could love it or hate it because I believe love and hate is the same emotion. Mm -hmm. I try not to have people have a reaction of, what I could do, well, I don't know, it hit me like 70 degree weather, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, when you hear, when you feel 70 degree weather, you don't have no comment. It's not too hot and not too cold. I try to either be too hot or too cold. Either you love it or hate it, because usually when you hate it so much, you end up loving it. And if you love it a whole lot, you probably end up hating it or getting tired of it. So I try to be either or. And Terminator X is a combination of old school, new new school flavor. I think is an experiment um, in hip hop. I think hip hop is a thing that we should still be able to be um, innovative and continue to experiment with. The whole album is being narrated this time by Cool Herc. Oh, really? Yeah. So, oh, that's flavor. Yeah. Ooh. So I mean, it, you mm. know, I had some problems with mm. with um, Rush. Def Jam, and mm -hmm. because you know, you know, to them, if they can't, if they ain't got 19 groups that that shoot them up, bang bang. Now, now they on that shoot them up, bang bang, uh, gangster tip. Now, and I'm like saying, you know, what I offer something that might not be that shoot them up, bang bang tip. You guys looking for a million units to be sold? Out of this situation might only sell 250 thousand, but it'll add flavor to hip hop where it's needed. See, that's one of the problems I have, Chuck, with there's too many guns in the streets, as it is with you, mm -hmm. and people are getting shot every day. And now, see, that's, some people say that as well, as the record companies have a lot to do with that. They're saying that artists should come out, you know, having guns and so forth, and have this, and that kids see this, and they say, well, they can do it on TV, why can't I do it? Well, a lot of people have probably said, well, they're a public enemy, but, you know, public enemy has been nationalists and revolutionaries, so that's been our image, it's discipline. I mean, when you see the police, they have guns too, but they just don't be throwing them up in the air, pop popping like they just don't care. Right. You know what I'm saying? The same thing, you know, um, I tell brothers all the time, if you do have one, learn how to shoot one and know who to shoot. Just don't, you know, if you have one, um, you know that here in New York is a serious offense and you will definitely be headed to jail. And I know it brings me up, brings probably you up to the next question, like what up with Flavor Flav, you know, with his gun is, uh, um, that's unfortunate, but Public Enemy has been about a group that's been in the middle of the hood. We still all for Roosevelt, and we struck. We try to come battle. We try to battle some of the same ailments that affect us every day: self hate, um, jail, the law, drugs, all these things. And um, it's unfortunate that it touched upon us, but it just shows that nobody is is void of this type of situation everybody no matter what you i've never touched a drug or drank in my life but that does not stop my struggle and feeling the pain of those around me that do that's why I, I don't never down brothers and sisters if they caught by the situation i try to attack those that pull the strings those that run the drugs in our community those that run more liquor those that run the gambit of the trade and continue to mack and exploit our situations and, and, and render us helpless. So I try to work in those type of situations. No matter who you are, every brother and sister knows somebody in their family or friends that's been trapped by these ills of society. So that's what we've been about. That was my next question. What is the situation that's going on with the malt liquor uh, uh, lawsuit that you have going? I stung them and hit them up pretty good. We, they settled out of court. Mm -hmm. um, it was able to take care of my legal fees over the last two years and able to um, deal with some of the copyright infringement on my voice. I wanted to try to take them all down, but I was told by my legals, and I was told by the told, by the whole system that you can only sue for copyright on my voice. I couldn't like keep, you know, um, the, the, the malt liquor out of the stores. I wanted to take it from St. Ives on to all these other places. But I try to do like a Rosa Parks with it, you know what I'm saying? Where, yeah. yeah, try to you know, shut it down that way. But you need a whole community and a whole force, and then legal fees are expensive. So I didn't lose. I didn't come out losing, but, you know, I came out um, and stung them a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and let them know that they can't play around and they better check their sources before they do what they think they want to do. Hmm. Not only is Chuck a, a prolific artist as well as writer and so forth, he also is a entrepreneur having his rap style business. You want to talk a little bit rap style? Yeah, well, entrepreneur, I mean, it just means that I'm out there hustling, that's all. It's a clean hustle. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, I figured that rappers for years sold a lot of sports 
Yeah, include myself. When I first started my career, I was wearing stuff by the Raiders, Pirates hats, and people would go to Foot Locker and whatnot, pick up all these clothes. And it'd be Ice Cube or be LL. Somebody would pick up whatever the rappers would wear. Run DMC, sold Adidas for years. So um, my whole thing was to do what Starter did to sports and try to get involved with um, music merchandising. And I created this company called Rap Style because the company I was working with you know, try to tell me what to do. So I was like, I cut them off, started my own, and made up a five-year program. And I figured with this five-year program, maybe in 1996 or 1997, I'll have something where it'll start looking like an official music merchandisers or rappers. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, in order to get into that whole apparel field, no matter what angle you're coming in at, you got to really be solid, and you got to really understand um, your market and you got to really set a long plan. You got to set a long-term plan. I started in 91 and at the end of my first plan it'd be 1996. So it's 1994 right now, you know, so, you know, it's another two years I think it'll be beginning to make a profit. And that's what you look for a business to do. It has expenses. That means if we spend $10 and we make $20, that means it's a business that will run and pay its people. If it's if you're spending ten dollars for five years and you're making two dollars, that means it's time for you to <laughs> dump it, <laughs> get rid of it, kid. It's over. Out of here. <laughs> How many people do you employ with your organization? We got about like forty people circulating around us and different things. There's Public Enemy. There's your Jam of Music. There's Hank Shockley. There's you know, uh, you know, it's it's Black Beat Music. It's it's you know everybody has. It's you know Malik Entertainment, which is the S ones. Um, entertain, um, management company that they're, they're moving into. Um, we try to have everybody have their own company, pretty much, but have it under a situation where we all work with one another. That's really know. positive. Yeah, really well, positive. It's, not only is it positive, it's necessary, because if we don't do it, we can't talk about it. And number two, if we don't do it, we just got a whole bunch of people around us yelling for money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Where money know. comes from, money has to come from a, diff a lot of different sources, <laughs> And you have to be rooted in the community. You have to be kind of close to each other to be able to say, well, damn, we got a dollar from this situation. So this is what this dollar means. I mean, it's easy to, to, to scream and, and grasp for money, but it don't grow on trees. You have to earn it. You have to service people. And you have to be able to be able to give them what they want. And then this is not just in music, but this is just in a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? So um, hopefully if we set some plans, on things will be all right. Let me ask you one more question before we wrap this up. What do you think about the situation that took place in the city with the mayoral race, with uh, Jenkins losing and Giuliani becoming the new mayor of New York City? Well, I think it was a situation that, that whenever a black man gets in to be mayor, you know, you have to take it as, yo, we got one there. But we have to be realistic is that um, a mayor cannot solve the problems for black people anywhere or even in New York because when Dinkins became mayor, he became mayor of New York City. Now you have a whole lot of communities, Italian communities, you have Catholic Jewish communities. They have their situation tight, you know? And their little communities, they tight. And so if they don't feel they're getting what they deserve, immediately they coming out and attacking the mayor, who has to be the mayor for all the people. Now being that in our black community, yes, we could push together for some months and vote and get him in with some power from other communities. But if we not tight, we can't put as much pressure to get what we need on one man or one t situation if you got all these other communities that are tighter than us. They're going to have their program together. and they're going. I mean, they, they set up that way. When they came over here on boats, they didn't come on the same boats we came on. True. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They came from Europe. They stayed in the same community. They related to one another. They did business with one another. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they corresponded, and then they flowed like that to the point where Today, they still had their, their family, business, and they still are an institution now, you know, in their same communities. Here, we've come from scattered, and we're still scattered about now. We're not getting our, our, our proper due. So we can't put pressure on the situation. Other people put pressure on Dinkins. He crumbled a couple of times, and then they said, well, he didn't do his job. Well, um, who's to say Giuliani will do a good job? Because this guy, you know, he, you know, he'll just turn his back to the black community and we won't hold him accountable unless we're really damaged. So, you know, and when it gets to that type of level, I try to tell black people, well, if you want to understand politics, 
at least run, know who's running the school board and whatnot, who, where your kids are going to and stuff like that on a local level. So that's a city uh, type of thing, but the black community has to have an understanding of what it is. You know, it's it's a lot bigger than a, a Dinkins and, and being a black mayor, because black mayors, although they are in a lot of cities, they can be there as a symbol, but the real work is what counts, is like making people, are, are there more black businesses flowing through, or more city monies or, or, or county monies coming through in the black community? Is, a, is it right? Um, is it the right proportion to share coming through? You know, we have to have a community that checks up on those balances. Exactly. It's good to say that the community has to come together itself first before it does anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like uh, I see uh, Mr. Jack Prophet out there, you know, you know, helping us here in Roosevelt. We're trying, you know, we try, trying all year long to try to get a community center built out here on Nassau Road, right between Roosevelt and Raymond. And, I remember uh, they signed that there used to be a Roosevelt Youth Center here. Yeah, back in the days. Yes. But you know what happened is the population has like doubled and what you have is you have a lot of mad kids like out on, on Nassau Road with nothing to do. And they'd be like, yo, what's up? So if there was a facility that would both entail recreation and cultural arts and also community um, unity or, or connection up there where everybody could congregate, then um, you have a situation where young young people that have the energies and the talents, they could be like, oh yeah, yeah, I could do that because somebody I seen did it and I could open up my own business. It'll be a blessing to see um, young people that got that energy. They want to go into business right now when they're 17 or 18, but they have to be taught. Some Something got to be out there to teach them that. And um, that's what we're trying to strive for, at least in one square mile of Roosevelt that's vastly overpopulated. So at least we should be able to have something that service the population. That speaks. And uh, what do you think the future of hip hop is going to be? Oh, well, let me tell you, the future of hip hop will always be here because I'm going to get you all some terms straight because a lot of people are talking off the back of their neck. Hip hop is the culture, which means hip hop is just a term for whatever black people happen to create. We are very creative people. The term for, uh, for what we create now is hip hop. Grandmama by Larry Johnson, that's hip hop. Same thing, Mingus was hip-hop, you know, um, Bambada all the way up to, you know, Juvenile uh, Committee is, is hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? I mean, hip-hop is the, is the culture, you know, Pumas is hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whack hairstyles is hip-hop, long, big earrings, as well as what people are doing with certain musics. Now, rap music is a vocal over music, which means rap will never go away. <laughs> rap will never go away. Rap is one of the few vocals ever created for recorded music or live music. You have to get those terms straight. It goes over music. Now, the music that rappers use are blues, jazz, uh, soul, rock and roll, which is our music. So when we have those terms correct, then we know that rap music is not going anywhere. Hip-hop is not going anywhere unless black people disappear, then hip-hop will disappear. Rap music is not going anywhere because it's a vocal that happened, a vocal style that happened to get created. It's just stupid, a stupid statement saying, well, won't rap music, when will it go away? That's like saying, well, when will they stop singing? You know, so it'll be here. You'll see young kids come up with ill styles and they'll be flowing from freestyle fellowship on out. You know what I'm saying? All right, Chuck, I'd like to thank you for coming down to the studios today. And that was easy, right? Very easy. <laughs> no, of the flow. Yo, 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 check out the flow. It's the number one show. You got to go for what you know. All right? There it is. Before we wrap it up, though, I'd like to say something to the brothers in Union of the Dark Side and the North Side. What you're doing is ill. You're both in the same town. You need to come together. I'm from Uniondale, and I, well, so called, whatever side you want to call it, the Darks, whatever it is. And uh, I never heard no nonsense like that. We have little rivalries and things, but y'all need to put that to rest. I'm going to say peace.